you just didn't know when to start, how to start, or even just the right route to get moving on this kind of a um, <laughs> on this kind of a new profession or venture. Well, welcome to my you uh, my YouTube and Instagram, uh, not YouTube and Instagram, but my live. Um, my name is Sonia Paz, professional artist, and um, I have started this uh, True Confessions page just to kind of go through and uh, answer a lot of questions people have about wanting to learn more about what is life as an artist? What do we do? What do we, how do, what is driven? And um, so I'm real happy to be able to, uh, you know, provide you with all this information. And um, today I wanted to talk about how I started and what my, um, my um, journey is as an artist to be able to help others um, I have a podcast that I also um, host called the Rockstar Mentor Podcast, and um, I have over 130 episodes there to where I share everything that I have experienced and that I, the knowledge that I have and all of the good, good nitty gritty for um, you know life as an artist and help helping others, other creatives and other business people who might just, you know, just general business, small business that want to learn more about how to market themselves and get involved with networking and following up and just a whole variety of different um, great valuable information. And I also, um, you know, my, my, my profession is so broad at this point because not only am I a fine artist that paints, that owned a gallery, that have a studio, that works on commissions, that has a product line. Um, I also have my jalapeno business. I have my vino paint business. I have my newly launched Sonia Paz Creative where I teach um, online courses. But all of this didn't come just all of a sudden one day. It has been 20 years in the making but um, I wanted to just talk a little bit about how I transitioned from working in high tech for, for many years, working in high tech to um, being forced to take the leap into um, being a full-time artist. Um, I guess I didn't really realize that I would end up still be doing this nearly 20 years later, but let me explain a little bit of, um, a little bit about the journey. So. I mean, I worked in corporate jobs for for a long, long time. I mean, in the late uh, in the late eighties, I worked at Mitsubishi Motors, and then I went to Apple, and then um, um, we had moved out to the East Coast for about three years, and I worked for Revlon, um, and I also worked at a rubber boot manufacturer out there, and. Um, Upon arriving back in California, I went back to work at Apple as a contractor and then um, uh, ended up taking a job with Claris Corporation, which was the software for the Mac, or software for, you know, just as Mac and PC. But, um, you know, from there I went to Microsoft, from there I went to Adobe, where I had um, been there for about seven years. And I have, in all of these jobs, I've always created. I used to own a company uh, called Zappy Productions, which Z uh, Paz, my last name Paz backwards, is Zap. So I started this business um, writing uh, kids' names on a variety of different products. Um, that was kind of before it was a big thing. That was way before Cricut. That was way before any sort of vinyl lettering. I actually painted the names on on products like trays and chalkboards and storage buckets and bins and lunch boxes and I mean I had probably about 30 different products that we did and I did just local craft shows and stuff because I had kids and my kids at that time were little um, uh, my younger son was about five my older son was about 10 so there was yeah I mom was first you know mom being a mom was first and foremost and having a real I hate to say that, a real job, a full-time paying job working in corporate so that I can, you know, do all this little extra artful stuff. Um, every job I've ever had has been pretty creative in one way, shape, or form. If I was working in high tech, I always, you know, I was painting or I was doing some type of handmade craft or whatever. Not always selling my stuff at that time, but had um, certainly started to kind of pave the way and always was wishing and hoping 
for um, the art business or any sort of craft that I was doing to be bigger, better, faster, stronger. So, you know, as the evolution of life happens, you end up with, you know, you know, moving or change of family status or whatever the case is. And so, um, you know, I've always, I always would love to paint. And I would say in the mid nineties, started painting again and just didn't really find my voice. And I reflected a lot about what the, um, you know, I had art teachers that would always tell me that I was doing, you know, oh, you shouldn't do this because that's not what the masters did, or you shouldn't do that, you know, or this is unconventional. And there was always some stifling um, advice. And I don't know if that's the advice of um, art teachers that maybe have been frustrated in their own journey. I have no idea. Um, I kind of blanked a lot of those people out of my mind because um, I didn't find anyone so encouraging and uplifting to be able to help, um, you know, raise that, uh, raise that hope or even help devise a plan. So um, when I was painting, you know, I mean, I didn't really have a voice. I didn't find a voice. And then I started thinking about all of those things that art teachers would tell me. And then I thought, you know what, I'm going to, I got to paint from here. I got to paint from within myself in my own loves and desires of what speaks to me. What kind of artwork do I want to collect? What kind of artwork really sets forth a, um, a plan of who I am or a, a blueprint, a blueprint of who I am, part of my personality. And so, you know, I, my two loves of art have always been, it's always been American pop art, Lichtenstein, uh, Herring, Warhol, you know, very simplistic doodles or concepts or designs or icons that really um, cement a, a broader sense of design. And I mean, even advertising design, all of that type of stuff. Um, I mean, I was always, you know, doing all of these reproductions and tracing. I don't know if anyone remembers in the, in the, used to get these comic books and at the or the magazines at the back, it would have like a picture of a bunny and saying, you know, oh, learn how to draw this on your own. And those were kind of sort of almost like the foundation of, you know, permission to be able to create in that format. You know, it's like, oh, okay, well, people can actually learn this and do this. You don't have to be a who's who kind of thing. So um, my favorite, back to the design, um, my favorite loves of art was, was American pop art. You know, I loved Lichtenstein because he was taking simple com uh, uh, components from comics and adding his own flavors in gigantic format. And, um, you know, Warhol to a degree, you know, because, you know, he was no permission doing his own thing, just kind of had a vision and kind of went with it and it took off and it was all about timing as well. So, my other style of artwork that I um, really gravitated toward from a very, very young age was the Picasso Cubism style. I just, you know, it's one of those things where there's just lots of lines and curves that kind of interrupt, let's say, a, a landscape or a portrait or a still life that you can still see the, the concept of those elements, but they're kind of disrupted by shapes and things in different colors. So I've always found that to be incredibly... Um, inspiring and really just fascinating. So when I started really painting again in the late 90s, I took my concepts of American pop art, excuse me, and um, the cubism, Picasso cubism style that he and George Brock sort of just kind of developed this, this uh, movement. And I thought, well, I'm just going to kind of take things that I like, you know, uh, concepts of faces. I love the big eyes. I love the, the faces, the, you know, the woman's looking this way, but she's also looking at you and there's defined by different colors. And so I started doing that and just exploring more and taking, uh, taking things, uh, elements in my life. And we had, um, we had a family member who had passed away. Actually, my ex-husband had passed away in 1999 and I was driving one kid to one grief counselor and driving another kid to another grief counselor. And so there was all of this dynamic stuff happening. This just this, this 
crazy um, part about healing and trying to bring some joy into our lives and things, you know, kind of just helping the healing process. And um, I started, I dug out the paints and started painting again. And instead of doing dark matter or, or dark, you know, type of uh, paintings, I decided I'm going to do things that are brighter and happier and joyful. And that was the, the, that was the permission that allowed me to really just kind of run with um, going in that direction. I thought, okay, you know, I'm going to do everything the teachers told me not to do. I mean, you know, who, who says you have to do what the masters did? I mean, I'm not trying to be um, a Dutch artist, or I'm not trying to be, you know, um, you know, whatever, Bob Ross. I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, I don't want to do landscapes. I'm, I really don't want to do, you know, uh, learn how to do figurative drawing or anything like that. That wasn't kind of my thing. What, what I see in my brain are colors and shapes and designs that I really wanted to just pr promote and produce onto canvas and, and all that. So, um, so that little backstory. And so I was doing a lot of this and that was around the time that eBay was really taking off in the late nineties and, um, found that a lot of artists were selling art on eBay. So I thought, you know, I was painting up a storm. I mean, I had piles and piles of paintings I was doing because after working in corporate and I'd go home and, you know, wrangle the kids up, dinner, get them a bath, you know, get them to bed and get everything situated for the next day for school and all that good stuff. Um, I, I would sit down, instead of sitting down and watching yet another sitcom, or I would have the TV on, but instead of just sitting out being a couch potato, I was, I set up my, my little area on the dining room table and I just start painting and designing and just freeing myself of stress and um, anxiety and all different kinds of stuff. So, um, you know, it was really keeping my brain occupied and kind of giving me a sense of purpose as far as, you know, hey, you know, I mean, I have a sense of purpose, but I have, that was just another component of expression that I really wanted to produce. So um, long story short is I started creating a lot of paintings and thought, well, I'm just, you know, I'm going to start putting these up on eBay, you know, put an eight by 10 up there for a starting bit of $24 and 99 cents and see what happens. You know what? These things would be sitting here anyway. So why not just try to see if I can sell some? So I did. And, it uh, it took off, and there was a whole movement of underground outsider artists, uh, artists that were um, also getting introduced to, to eBay at the time. And I'd met John Seed through um, through this online artist group that he started doing this. It used to be keyword tagging for. Um, like outside art and, and people who wanted to sell online on eBay with EBSQ. So that was John Seed's uh, kind of naming convention or keyword that we would put into the title and the description of these paintings. And so there was, they, he created this group and it's evolved a bazillion percent since then. A lot of changes has happened. That would take another part two or three to just even go through that but managed to meet some really fantastic artists that were in the same boat as me. Um, I mean, there was John Seed, Amy Gillingham, Jalene, um, she's out of South Carolina. There was uh, Davmo, David Morris out of Virginia. I know I'm gonna leave some people. Um, I met uh, uh, Victor and Diane McGee. There was Tori, I don't remember her last name, but she was also an artist on there. Um, and if, if I, oh God, if I, please forgive me if any of my old EBSQ people are watching this and I don't mention your name, please put it in the comments and remind me. But um, there was a whole bunch of people, a container of folks that were just, oh, Victoria, uh, Vicki Knowles. Oh, I'm sorry, that was coming back to me. Um, uh, Victor and Diane. Um, there was, there was a gal named Diana Potts, I think. There was just a bunch of artists that were on EBSQ selling, and then a, a website was made, and people, all of us artists can go there. We can talk about, you know, everything from creative to inspiration to, um, you know, customers to what's going on with eBay, and here's an update on eBay, and here's new uh, protocols and uh, restrictions or 
things that you can do now, just a whole variety. Of, it was just a great sharing forum. And that was really cool because as an artist who often got stifled or would take what negative comments would come thrown at me, I would take it too personally. In this day and age, I don't care. You can say whatever you want because I have such a thick skin that none of that stuff, none of that stuff bothers me. I mean, you know, I mean, there was, there was, it, it was a very encouraging group. And if people were starting to be bullies or whatever, they just got booted out of the group and it was great. So it was a very healthy online art environment. So um, uh, John Seed had started it and then his life got super busy. And so he handed that, the whole website off to um, uh, Amy and her husband, Amy Gillingham and her husband, who took it over and just really took, took the ball and ran with it. Um, so much changes and it gave artists a platform. It was one of the very first artist platforms out there that could allow an artist or creative person to be there, to be able to sell, set up a profile, talk about, you know, I mean, not talk about, because they didn't have live streaming then, or we, I don't know, at the time, it, the uh, website didn't really promote video, but, um, but it was, just, it's, it gave an artist a place to be. If you didn't have a website, that was an extension. If you did have a website, then this was an additional place you can be. It was very encouraging and just super, super motivating. It kept you kind of going. So I did a lot of this stuff in while working in corporate, and that was 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2000. Four years into doing, you know, painting, when I got home, uh, I would go home for lunch the next day. I would photograph everything in the driveway because the sun was just the right, you know, it was just the right lighting. And then that night I would go into Photoshop and I would crop and uh, watermark and resize my images. And then that night I would, or that weekend, I would post them onto eBay. And, you know, it was extra money. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, it was really fun to watch your your auctions kind of going up. You know, something starting off at twenty four ninety nine. It may sell for twenty four ninety nine. Maybe it would sell for sixty dollars. Maybe it would sell for a hundred dollars. And that motivation kind of kept me going and this was a really great foundation while I was working in high tech to be able to kind of do this on the side so I had four or five years that I really you know um, I did I loved my job at Adobe I loved 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 my job um, our group was amazing it was it was so such a great job it was that was oh I miss I miss all my <laughs> the Mikes and the Helenas and the um, and the Jeffs and the other Jeff and uh, Jan Michael and um, uh, Bill and Sam. Oh my God, there was there was our, yeah, our our group was so amazing and so. Then in 2002, a um, lot, of, lot of changes happened at Adobe. Actually, at the end of 2001, part, half of the group was disbanded and laid off. And then come April of um, 2002, they transitioned the remainder of our group. And I was reporting to somebody else. I was reporting to somebody else at that time. I wasn't a fan. I wasn't a fan of the group. It was not the same magic. It didn't have the same camaraderie. It was... Um, yeah, just, you know, it, it was time. It was time to move on. So they disbanded the remainder of our group, and uh, most of them were in the um, in the C Seattle area, and um, I wasn't going to move there. Um, so anyway, our group got disbanded, and I had already thought, well, you know what? I'm selling. I'm making this much on eBay just doing it part-time. If I can focus and do that full-time and maybe double what I'm doing, that's a gigantic bonus. Let's see, I got a comment here. Oh, Barry Buchanan. Oh my God, hello. <laughs> Hi, Barry. Um, thank, how am I doing? Love your art. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited you're here. Um, yeah, just talking about just the journey of being a, a professional full-time artist. So, um, yeah, thank you, thank you. So, um, so with, with um, setting the foundation down as being able to kind of do this already, I was able to really take this and make it a full-time job. So 
um, not only was I really expanding, I took one day off. That was April 30th of 2002. I took one day off and then I thought, you know what, I'm going to really, I'm going to put down, really start grounding myself and focusing with the blinders on, just really keeping a focus on the art business and what I'm going to do, what kind of venues I want to do, and really expanded my reach to doing the art and wine festivals. Now up here in Northern California, art and wine festivals are just, they're just, they're everywhere. I mean, they're, I mean, from Sausalito to, to Gilroy. I mean, it was, um, I was very blessed and very, very appreciative of friends like my friend uh, Jen Norton. She's an amazing artist. And uh, she, she, you know, I reached out to her. It's like, I know you're doing these shows. Do you think I can get into these things? And she was telling me, are you joking? Of course you can get into these things. Uh, just apply. But here's what you need to do when you apply because certain promoters require certain different types of things. So she gave me the inside scoop. Um, and Carrie, uh, Carrie Lonsby, um, she goes, her name now is Carrie Hummingbird, and she's awesome. She actually helped me, because when you, when you have to apply for these um, art shows, you have to set up an art booth and show your booth shot or your production and your studio. So she actually, I came over. Her kids were really little at the time. I drove over there with my van full of art. We set up her, her booth in her backyard. We hung up all of my art. I took all these, you know, all these photos with my funky little old digital camera I had at the time, little, um, uh, God, was it Fu Fuji, Fuji camera, anyway, and was able to apply. And, you know, you had to, you had to print out all the photos, everything back then, you still had to do everything with, um, um, you know, long-handed applications and f actual physical photographs and you had to make sure everything on those applications was to the T because you could not, um, you could not, if you forgot to check a box or forgot to include a photo or, or whatever it was that they did, they would, they were such a demand to get into these amazing shows like California Artists and MLA Productions and Pacific Fine Art, um, even the Santa Clara Art and Wine, that if you missed a deadline, too bad. If you didn't include something in there, too bad. They just, they would just, they would, they wouldn't even return your stuff. They'd keep your stuff and send you a letter saying you didn't complete it. You know, come, come back next time, you know. Um, so there was a lot of kind of crazy stuff like that happening. Um, it was good. That's just how you run a business. You have to be really, um, you have to be really thorough. So I fortunately had five years under my belt and a lot of artwork that when I started doing the outdoor shows, that was, um, that really cemented my, my, the path. That was really the, the, the rocky, the, the road paved that helped me with getting into these shows and to allow me to get myself out there, at least in the Northern California area. Um, I mean, it was Sunnyvale, Mountain View, Los Gatos, Saratoga. Santa Clara. Um, I did in 2005. I was handpicked from the Sausalito group to not only be an artist there, but to be the artist to create their t-shirt artwork, which was pretty cool. Being that I'd never been in the show, and then they looked at my artwork as the prime type of, um, um, you know, the prime, the prime factor of uh, the right look that they wanted for their t-shirt art. And so I was really, really felt blessed and fortunate to have had that opportunity. I mean, lots of opportunities, lots of posters, lots of t-shirts, lots of, um, you know, winery shows. And so I really just took the business and really made a gigantic, um, you know, I, yeah, I made an opportunity out of it. And I'm pretty tenacious marketer and I'm pretty um, um, ruthless. I mean, not ruthless, that bad word. I'm not horrible about marketing, but I am determined. I'm a determined marketer. Um, if someone tells me no, I don't just go, oh, yeah, okay, thanks, bye. No, it's like, no, really, why? What did you find? So an example of that is I applied in 2003. 
2003, I, uh, or was it 2004? No, it was like 2003. I, I applied with the Artist Guild of San Francisco. I had found them, and I thought, well, this is pretty cool. I'd like to see. And I went, and I downloaded the application. I filled it out. I mailed it in, and I got one of these letters back in the mail saying, thanks, but no thanks. And I thought, well, that's kind of crappy. I didn't like their explanation. I, I mean, I wouldn't say I didn't like it. I wasn't satisfied with their explanation to why I wasn't accepted. It was sort of like, oh, thanks. You've got to look that it really doesn't um, mix our, uh, doesn't really, I know I have all these, I have a folder of rejection letters. I, <laughs> it was basically, your look is is nice, but it's not really something we're looking for. And so I, I said, well, I think what would be better is let me come out and show you my work in person. Um, so I reached back out to them and they said, okay. So I went to Washington Square and brought my artwork and I had to be juried. It was like a jury um, at one of their outdoor events. And um, so I had to leave the artwork there and go walk down the block for about an hour or whatever. And they um, did a jury. And when they came back, they said, you know what? It was part of this. Let me just tell you. It wasn't just about the artwork. It was my personality. Um, I was very confident that not only am I an artist that I know I could sell. I was a web develop. I love that. I was a web developer. Um, I was a print designer. I can help and I can be an asset to the group. So, a lot of these things just help with you know information. There was a lot of information. There wasn't anything on that application that said, you know, here are other are there other skills that you can bring to the table. I don't think that was on there. I think it was afterwards, after I kind of proved my point. But anyway, I got into that group, and it was awesome. And to this day, I have so many collectors and clients from being at the Artist Guild who purchased from me way back in the day that has been that come back every year for an ornament or whatever. And I am truly, truly grateful. Um, so, I mean, I know that, you know, we're going into like t almost 30 minutes of me talking about this, but this is, this is a, a topic that can be, that actually, um, I'm working on some online courses. So I'm working on two. One is, well, I don't want to reveal the other one until it's done, but um, this is, this very well can be, an online course that can help other people is just, you know, the facets of how to run an art business. And I am very business centric. Um, biz you got to be business first if you're going to be an artist because you can be a fabulous artist, but really lack in the marketing sense. So part of the podcast that I put together, the Rockstar Mentor podcast, really helps artists with learning how to break away from being introverted or just if you are introverted, how to, to kind of take the right steps to expand yourself to have a successful art business and um, reasons why maybe hiring somebody to do that for you may not necessarily be the right thing, but everyone's different and everyone's art is different. So, you know, um, yeah, it's a, it's a big topic, but for me, that was the beginning of my journey as a full-time artist. Um, I gave myself the commitment after we had the layoff at Adobe that I will do this for six months. If I don't make, if I, if I try this for six months and I do the outdoor shows and I continue to do, you know, uh, open studios or whatever the case is, um, if I'm not doing it or enjoying it, and that was, that's a big factor. You have to enjoy what you're doing and you have to love your job because you're doing this as a living and you're doing this to survive. So, you know, if you are painting and that you don't like the marketing part of it and you'd rather, you know, work a corporate gig or run a different business or whatever, and if that's what your passions are, then, you know, you have to go with what you love to do. Don't ever feel forced into a job that you don't enjoy. So, um, that's kind of it. Um, I always say I'm going to come on here for 10 minutes, but, you know, I have... I'm going to be uh, coming up this April of 2022 will be 20 years as a full-time professional artist. Um, I have I have done a series of dances with my career. I mean, I went from you know 
doing art shows to having a, a studio outside the house and then to have a, a gallery and then another gallery and then a pop shop and then another gallery and then um, scaling down, um, pivoting a bit, taking on, trying to do art classes with Vino Paint, um, pivoted to do, uh, I'm in the food business now. I'm, I, there's so many things and every time it seems like I pick up another thing to work on or another um, extension of the creative services or creative business that I'm doing, I think, oh my God, what am I doing? Should I be doing this? Do I have the time? But I enjoy it. So I don't regret it. And I, I am happy with, with what I'm doing. So, I mean, if anybody is interested to know more, let me know. Put comments in the, in the comment section here. This is, gonna, this is streaming on YouTube as well as on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, drop me a note. Um, I know I'm like over a year into set, uh, new episodes on my Rockstar Mentor because we've had a lot of family things going on. Um, it's all good. It wasn't good, but now it's really, really good. But um, yeah, just uh, just let me know. Um, the 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 uh, I'm going to be pivoting a little bit with the with the podcast as far as my. Um, the way I'm doing them. I was doing them in a, in a certain format with, um, you know, software on my Mac, and I think I'm going to transition over to something a little easier, because I think the easier it is and the faster it is to edit it, and I, I know now by doing streaming videos that I don't have to be absolutely perfect, and I don't have to say, sound like, you know, um, a news anchor person, you know, because I think people just want to hear the message. As long as the audio is good, and, you know, then it's all good. But that's kind of it. Um, the creative journey. It's it's been a it's been a it's been amazing. I'm very thankful for my husband and all my and my kids and everybody and my you know my folks and family and brother and sister in law and um, cousins and all that who've always supported and have always respected my decisions into doing this. Um, there has been some naysayers in my day. I don't even. I don't even connect with those people because they don't matter. Um, you're always going to get a naysayer and um, that's because they're unhappy with their own lack of success in their life or their own, um, or so, there's just a lot of Debbie Downers out there who just don't, I don't even give them the real estate in my life to, to, to go there. So anyway, I hope everyone is having a great day. Thank you so much for hanging in there and listening. Um, if you're an artist and you want to learn more, reach out. I'll see how I can help you. And, yeah, happy Monday, happy Labor Day. Um, Sonia Paz with Sonia Paz Art and Design. Peace out, everybody. Hope everyone has a great week, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.